so today I am prepping for my overnight stay at the medical unit and this suitcase might look <laughs> really big for one overnight stay but I learnt a lot from last year from doing the study that I did in August and that is always take your home comforts so one of the best pieces of advice I was given by a nurse before I started there last year was bring your own pillow and so I took my own pillow and that was a, such a brilliant idea and this year I'm taking my own blanket because hospital bedding doesn't change that much wherever you go and I really wish I'd had an extra cosy blanket on top of my bed I started laying out my dressing gown so I'm going to only take one set of clothes to wear that's the ones that I'll be wearing in the morning and I'll come back in those but I'm taking a nice set of cosy pajamas uh, just so that you know in the evening I'm comfy I'm going to take advantage of the showers wash my hair because free water why not and I'm just going to just put together enough cosy things so that I have a comfortable night because I'm not very good at sleeping in places that I don't know and even though I am now familiar with this place the people around me won't necessarily be so and I want to be comfortable and as cosy as I can so that I can get some actual sleep because not getting enough sleep is really triggering for me for headaches so I need to try and protect myself against that as much as possible so why not be comfortable I'm only there for one night but one night can feel like a really long time when you're only there to be kept an eye on so once they've completed the procedure which will only be the first say four hours I've then got loads of time to just kick around with nothing to do they will feed me there is free wi-fi so I am going to take my laptop uh, because even if I don't do any work I will definitely want to, um, you know, put something on that I can watch. Like I've got a few things downloaded from some series that I'm um, that I'm watching at the moment. So I'll take some of that, and that'll help the evening pass. I might not use any of it. I might be really, really tired and just want to sleep. But because I'm being monitored after a sedation, they probably won't want me to sleep for all the time. So I'm just packing this case because it's just easier to have it all in one place and then I can pack my laptop securely in amongst all these lovely soft things and I'm going to pack all my toiletries and stuff in there as well so it's all in one place and then I'll be ready to go and then all I have to do in the morning is just get dressed, leave and everything will already be in the one place because I have to leave at 6.30 in the morning, which I'm not going to be happy about, and I won't be very organised. So that means I've got to get up at 6, which is just absolutely horrific. So I'm just going to make sure that I am organised as possible tonight. Everything's ready to go, and then I don't have to worry in the morning, and then before you know it, I'll be back home again.
so. I'm heading home. <sighs> Didn't do very well on the screen, on the second screening. Um, wow, it's a long day. I've uh, many, many hours of no water, no food. I was supposed to go in at nine to have this, this screening test done and uh, it was like half eleven before they were taking me in. And it was really warm over in the other department where we were having it done and I just started to lose it a little bit and I almost passed out waiting to go in. So, And I think it was a, a mixture of really low blood sugar levels, really dehydrated, very tired, I had a headache coming on because I've been waiting for so long for food and just the the anxiety of building up to a procedure that I'd never had before. So it just all kind of accumulated and I almost passed out waiting to go in for the actual procedure and they decided that it's I'm probably not best suited to this kind of thing. So I'm going home. So I don't know what I'm going to get paid for doing this. Um, I know I'll get 75 for the first bit and I did a repeat blood test and then there was today. So I might get a pro rata for those two second visits. I seem to think that that happened before. But anyway, so I am now <laughs> going home. I will not be doing anything that involves invasive things. This was going to be a bronchoscopy, which is basically where they put a camera down either down through your mouth or through your down through your nose and they check the condition and the suitability of you know um, the tract down to the lungs and they take small bio biopsy samples of your lung and it's not to check if there's anything wrong with you it's just that they get a good baseline to work with and I think had I been the first person in and it had all gone to plan I would have been fine but we sat around for so long and because there's another one of these at the end of the study as well it's not even like a one-off I think had I got in and done it then I'd be like oh fine because there were other people coming out who went in before me and saying yeah it was fine no problem don't worry about it but it was the build-up to it and an accumulation of you know basically starvation dehydration low sugar levels really tired headache and just sitting around waiting for far too long and it was just the way the day worked out so I had a feeling this might happen so that is the end of that and now I will just wait and see when more studies come up there's always things appearing I'll probably get a couple more chances this, this year and then yeah so we will see uh, we'll see what happens so I'm going home now and I'm probably going to have an early night because I'm absolutely knackered because I did have a good night last night anyway. So that's the end of that. <laughs> no medical study for me this year uh, or th this month. And I just have to go back and re just review my finances. I hadn't put any of the money from this on anyway because never presume before you've done it that you're going to you're going to get it. And uh, yeah, we just carry on and. Uh, We'll wait for the next one and we'll keep working on all other th all our other things so i'm heading home that's the end of that that's the end of this um what was going to be an interesting stream of things happening and it now means i suppose that i can now think about planning my trip to keswick so something to focus on catch you later i'm back home got myself a nice cuppa settle down uh, just chilling out and I just wanted to add something to the end of that last piece that I did when I was in the car just about to come home from the screening and it's really because I've had some comments to some previous things that I've done about doing medical trials um, which I was just reading this afternoon after I got back and I was just, you know, having a look through because I've got a bit behind with 
responding to comments because a lot of comments come in and you do get a lot of hostility from some people about doing medical trials it's like why the hell would you want to put your health on the line for stuff like this I mean we're all entitled to our own way of doing things I mean it's a very popular way to make a small income um, they are up to their eyeballs in potential volunteers at the centre that I go to they have so many people asking to volunteer they never go short some people do it every year multiple times a year some people do it once every so often uh, I meet all sorts of interesting people along the way um, there are a whole number of reasons I do it partly as I've spoken before about how I've never really given back in any sense and this feels like something that I can do within my parameters that may make a difference I mean it certainly makes a difference to my bank account that's for sure and you can't tell me that a lot of the volunteers who are doing it are doing it for the money we get a lot of students in um, a lot of people on jobs that just aren't paying their bills like teachers I've met teachers I've met just so many interesting people in all walks of life who are doing this sometimes for the money partly because they want to put back and two other reasons on a personal level one is and I think I've mentioned before how I'm not very good with medical stuff so today was a test and it was a test that I failed um, I've never been good with medical stuff as a child I would pass out at the sight of blood I couldn't even watch casualty on TV I still can't watch those A&E documentaries it just gets me every time um, so today wasn't entirely a surprise I had a feeling this might happen just because of the invasive nature of what was being done even though it wasn't because I was ill I would imagine that if I'd been going to have that done having no experience and I was having it done because I was sick because there was something wrong with me I think my anxiety levels have been a lot higher than they were I've tried this it hasn't worked they've taken me off the list to do bronchoscopies um, they've said my anxiety it builds up too much around it and I think you know had I not had to wait so many hours today there was a lot of waiting around we got very tired we're very hungry Our sugar levels went through the floor incredibly dehydrated because you can't have, it's all nil by mouth you can't have anything at all for so many hours beforehand because of the sedation so when we were all laying there we were absolutely knackered and there were two people on reserve waiting to go after me if somebody failed or the bronchoscopy went wrong that being me and I joked with the girl across the way who was waiting um, and thought she was going to go home and really wanted to do the trial and I said hey there's a good chance I'm going to fail this and you'll be in and it did turn out to be her because the other person that was on the ward who was ahead of her as a stand-in he waited so long that when they did his blood pressure again before they were going to take him in, his blood pressure had gone up and they just weren't happy about sending him over. So they are really strict. And the other thing, of course, is that you get these health checks that you just don't get on the NHS. I am all for um, having medical checks before you get ill rather than reacting to things after you're sick. So if we had more regular health checks for people at certain ages that did a whole set of right you're okay nothing to worry about there's nothing hidden going on there I was talking about my friend who's just suddenly been diagnosed with lung cancer and maybe if they did regular lung scans um, you know they've stopped doing the um, the regular mammograms for women now they don't do them anymore in the hope that you will just spot if you have a problem but what if you don't 
What if you don't know what you're looking for, or you don't understand how to know what you're looking for, or you just don't bother to do it, you know? Young women particularly, or young people, think they're going to live forever and they don't do these checks. I had a friend who had um, a double mastectomy at 29 because she had breast cancer. It can hit you at any age. If you can get those checks, you should have them. Thank God we still have um, the um, cervical smear tests for women because if we didn't have those, I think, I dread to think what the, the levels of cervical cancer would be. Uh, every three years you get to know that there's nothing terrifying going on inside. And if we had more of those regular checks, they used to do these MOTs, so you'd get these MOTs uh, you could get done through the NHS and I even got the letter through saying hey you're you're hitting this age um, will it, you know you're now entitled to these and we'll invite you I never got invited I had to go and book one in and when I went in they looked at me like well, what do you want they had no interest at all so when I go in and do these screenings I get myself a good health check even if I fail like I did today I've had really good health check. I, I know that there's uh, nothing wrong with what's going on. The bronchoscopy isn't to look for problems that are in your lungs or in your, um, your tract down to your lungs. It's just to give them a baseline. Any, if there was anything wrong with my lungs or anything wrong in my, uh, in my tract, that would have come up on the other tests that they did. So they do all your blood tests, they do a urine test, they do ECGs. They check your mobility, they check your coordination, they do all sorts of things. These are like three-hour health checks that you'd never get on the NHS. And we get paid to do those. So you get 75 quid for sitting through a three-hour health check. I'll do those all year. I, I don't mind failing because of some tiny little detail or like what happened today if that means I get a full health check. But when I saw the doctor again today, today to clear me ready to go down for the bronchoscopy which I didn't have I asked her about my blood results because it came up again because I'd had two sets done and I had these elevated levels and I quizzed her more on this it was a different doctor I'd seen before so I asked her exactly what it is because my understanding was that it was my white blood cell count and she said no it's an inflammatory marker which means that potentially your body is fighting something it's just a slightly elevated level it's not catastrophic and it's not something that worries them uh, but it means that there's potentially something going on inside me that my body is fighting against now if I've had that last August and I've got it now that means that potentially I've been fighting something for the best part of a year or potentially even longer because I only started to do screenings in I think it was June and July so if I've got something going on inside me I don't know about, I want to know about that. And I want to know about it earlier if it's something that's going to become a problem. So I said to her, should I be going and getting this checked out with my doctor? And she said yes. Now, if I hadn't been in for those screenings, I wouldn't know to go and at least attempt to get this checked by the doctor. I haven't seen a doctor in years. I go and see the practice nurse every year. I get um, the, the checks that I get as a woman done when they're supposed to be done. So I do get regular contact with the GP's office, but it's always the practice nurse and they're easier to get into, at least in my experience. Um, I don't know what it's gonna be like trying to get into a doctor. So I'm gonna walk down there I think tomorrow and ask them because my understanding is that you have to phone in the morning, try and get a doctor's appointment and if you don't you wait and you wait and you phone again and you phone again and you phone again and it's really difficult to get appointments. I know that like them and my parents live they have almost an, a, a no entry policy on the, on the doctor's surgery, you can't even get through the door anymore, they just shut down pretty much during COVID and have never opened the doors again. Everything has to be by phone or by Zoom or you, you can't get in-person appointments for anything anymore. But my doctor seems to be very much open doors and we seem to be well supplied with doctors here. We have two doctor surgeries. 
um, and it has its own pharmacy there and all sorts. So I'm going to walk down there and have a word with the receptionist because you can physically walk through the doors and speak to a, a receptionist down there. And when I book m my um, appointments for the practice nurse, I just walk in, speak to the receptionist, we get out our diaries and we work out where I can fit in and that's it. And that's all I have to do. I don't have to do any of this phoning by 8 o'clock in the morning rubbish. So I'm going to attempt to do that and see if they will acknowledge whether or not I need anything looked at because one of the good things about these medical uh, all, all these tests that I've had done screenings uh, whatever is all that information gets sent back to your GP so they have your record they know what you've been doing they know what you've done they have all the results there so theoretically they can look and see what I'm talking about but we'll see if the system actually works and if I can't get seen by a doctor, and I know that my best friend who lives over in the Midlands has a terrible time with getting doctor's appointments. She thought she had a lump in her breast and it took her five months to find out she wasn't dying of cancer. Uh, and it was the most terrifying five months of her life because they just kept messing up and they didn't get back to her. And all the letters seem to be actual letters. Nothing seems to happen by email or text or phone it's all letters and everything just takes an age to organize so I'm going to give that a go but at least I now know that there is something that potentially I need to have investigated and if it turns out to be nothing brilliant maybe it's just that I have weird blood levels who knows maybe this is still a rollover from COVID I have no idea alternatively it could be something that's new or relatively new and it could be something that is treatable. It could be something that's a signal of something much worse to come that can be caught early. Who knows? I've, within parameters, and as I have reached a certain age, I have valued my health more because my health is my independence. Um, I've made a life for myself that means I am single purposefully. I need to be mobile and able to work and like so many single people I need to have all my faculties so I can't afford to um, not put my health first because money and health to be honest with you are the two most important things you can have if you just want to get by if you are fit and well and healthy you don't have to rely on people coupled with if you have enough money to keep a roof over your head and food on the table then you may not need to rely on other people and that's not to say that money and health are everything they're not not at all but if you don't worry about those two things that takes a lot of worry out of your life it really does all the other things in the world if you've still got a roof over your head and you're not sick will make a huge difference to how you cope with what else whatever is left so that's my pushback against people who criticise me and say I'm stupid and why would I be so reckless with my health by going on clinical studies. I don't think it's reckless. Um, and if it is, then there are thousands of people around the country every year who are being reckless. But is it any more reckless than people who smoke and drink too much and every time you step out on the street and you're breathing in various fumes that could be making you sick and you know you're not looking after your health and you're eating chronically over processed food which is making you sick you know we all have ways of uh, battering our bodies down and some of them just seem legitimate and others don't I would rather be doing this than so many other things so and it's also, you know, you get the anti-vaxxer people who will have a go at you for, you know, promoting this sort of thing. I'm not anti-anything. I think you do things because they fit with your life and they fit with your morals, your ethics. At whatever stage you are in life, I wouldn't have dreamed of doing something like this 15 years ago. And I don't have the experience of like bad experiences of medical. My parents have been very lucky. They're very fit, healthy, but when they have needed help, they've got it. And that's thanks to the medical system that 
can work. And I know that a lot of the people who are probably angry in the comments are people who've had bad experiences, and I appreciate that. I haven't. Um, and I understand the risks when I go in and do this. So that's me ending this, what is now a much longer post, because I just wanted to say those things, uh, because I think that's important to add. And I know that only certain people will watch this compared to some of the other ones that I've done on medical studies. But there's nothing wrong with having an open conversation and being kind of decent about it. You know, you don't have to be angry at someone because they volunteer for medical trials. Their heart is probably in the right place. Or maybe the system has ground them down and they really need the cash. Anyway, so that's my update. I um, hope you're having a good week and I will catch up with you again very soon.